Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the radio shop. On the bench today we have a, a Ritsu. This is the MT8802A. And this is a communication video test set. Now these things were mostly made for cellular equipment. You carry this down, check out the uh, repeaters in the uh, cell tower. But it also has the analog function where you can use it as a regular service monitor. It also has spectrum analyzer. Now this was sent up to us by Alan down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He had lost interest in it and wanted to give it a better home. Well, he did tell me that there is an issue with this unit and I've looked at the issue I think I know what it is I'm not sure problem is there's a few manuals online there's no schematics the so-called service manual lacks a lot of stuff in it just not a, a lot of service information on it there's a video here and there on it uh, one basically tells you, which is the 8801, tells you how to uh, to operate it. There's not a lot of difference between the 01 and the 02. And there's just a few, you know, hits and miss on the internet about it. Now there was a um, a thread over on the EEV blog on this particular model. But it really had nothing to do with the uh, current issue. I did go over and I posted a thread on the EEV blog. If anyone did have any more extra information on it. And a guy came back and replied and talking about the nightmare he had with his. And um, he posted pictures and I'll pop some pictures up here in a minute. Uh, on his unit and what he had seen but he had a lot of circuit board damage due to leaky capacitors and I think it said it took him months to uh, get the thing straightened out but this particular one let me go ahead and plug it in so it'll be getting ready see the standby light just came on But we'll turn this on. And it takes about about five minutes for it to boot up. Now you can see basically what's going on. But it comes out here, everything checks okay when it gets to SRAM. It says no check and SRAM battery empty then this one that locks up and it goes into a uh, mode where it doesn't do anything so we'll turn it back off give it just a minute turn it on and hold the preset button in Now you see it doesn't do it this as far as it'll go. Then I'll release the preset button. Now you see SRAM checks okay, but the battery's still empty. Now it's gonna take this thing a few minutes to load up, so uh I'll go ahead and uh 
skip through that loading right here it says loading and it takes about five minutes for it to come up and there you go as you can see it's up and running now this is the cell test data that it comes up to but uh, just come over here turn the main function on hit analog tester now you can go into using this thing as a regular signal generator service monitor type where you can do transmitter or receiver test depends on which ones you you know want to do but we're really interested in the fault that it's giving so that we don't have to press that reset button every time we turn this unit on so to get into this thing I'm going to go ahead and shut it off, disconnect the power now they screw in each one of these corner protectors so we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and take those off and then we get the top cover off okay the screw is out we can lift this cover right off and as you can see everything is uh, still covered in more shielding so to get down to the boards we're going to have to remove this plate and remove this plate well, as you guys can see all the cards in here we got several cards over here that's got uh, big aluminum shields over them this is the CPU board these are baseband boards some audio stuff going on over here but what we're interested in, the first thing we see over here on the CPU board is this big battery. So, and that's the only battery that I see in any of the boards. So we're going to go ahead and pop this one out. at it. A few capacitors up there. And the good thing is I don't see any leaking capacitors. But I'm very interested in this battery here. So since this is a multi-layer board I'm not going to uh, desolder this battery what I'm actually going to do is just clip the leads off so I do not have to uh, worry about damaging any solder traces on this now I don't have a battery like this that um, has the tabs already on it I'm going to have to solder wires and we're probably going to just hot glue the battery in place what I am going to do is take this battery pack this is three volts and I'm going to solder it onto the uh, bottom of the uh, tabs and cut the battery off right above this. This will keep power on the unit even though this battery is dead. Um, it will go ahead and, and keep whatever power is left in it just in case something goes wrong. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and just check this battery and see what is in it. and we showed about 94.3 millivolts so the battery is basically dead there is no charge left in it but instead of just uh, unsoldering the battery and putting a new one in it I'm going to take this battery pack and I'm going to solder in right here at the board on each terminal and the reason I'm going to do that is just to keep some charge on it I'm not going to desolder this battery this is a multi-layer board so this pin goes all the way through 
and on the back side there's no traces back here to uh, solder that extra battery to so uh, I don't want to risk damaging nothing so I'm gonna just clip them off I don't have a battery like this with the uh, terminals on it anyway so we just want to tack in the new battery take our side cutters and clip these legs off they'll be up above the board just a little bit then we'll get our new battery put in place and hot glue it down okay our battery is in place and uh, we'll go ahead and stick it in I verified we do have three bolts so we didn't kill the battery by soldering on it uh, you have to use the Mr. Carson's uh, method of soldering these batteries um, with a real real hot iron that way you can put it on cool it off with a cool rag and it only takes a second without destroying the battery so I'm going to go ahead and get this in and we'll get this thing powered up and see what it does alright guys uh, we'll see what this thing does now I'll turn the AC mains on so I'll stand by light come on then we'll go ahead and turn it on and see just what happens still say well battery is okay but SRAM is no check so we'll see what happens on this deal the relays click and there's our screen no press of the preset button this time so it looks like just by replacing that battery that take care of the boot up issue well guys that makes me real happy knowing that it will now boot up without uh, having to press that preset button but you know I don't think we're out of the woods yet uh, this unit is old I'm not exactly sure what the date is on it sometime early 90s I believe so that means these capacitors on, that's in this machine are old and I'm pretty sure the way this thing is sealed up it creates a lot of heat inside of it and you know what heat and capacitors uh, happens so <laughs> and uh, I do not want to uh, have the issue that the guy EEV blog had in fact I'll go ahead and show you some of those pictures now I'll just do um, point the camera at the screen I got them pulled up so the guy that posted these uh, his neck is OZ2 CPU and you can see where he's removed the capacitors and you can see all the electrolyte and stuff that has leaked down on the board and just eating the board away and you can see where how the electrolyte has spread out now <laughs> take note now these capacitors just on this board the board is cut out for the capacitors to lay in and still the electrolyte managed to wick up the leads of the capacitor and distribute itself all over the boards and in this image you can see exactly what that electrolyte has done to the other side I mean we see traces just about eaten away here and up here that electrolyte is really some nasty stuff when it starts leaking out of these capacitors anyway I'll leave a link down below to this uh, thread here on the EEV blog and to the other thread where they were going through some other issues with software anyway guys I think when this thing is uh, completed everything is uh, taken care of 
I think it'll be a nice addition to the bench. Uh, <laughs> one thing that I've got to do in here is do some rearranging. Uh, I need to build a storeroom because there's a lot of stuff here in the shop that you know it's not being used it's just sitting here there's boxes that stuff came in and you know try not to get rid of that stuff especially old electronics because uh, sometimes these old electronics contain parts that are very usable so you know you hate to just toss them out you now we probably could go in and and strip those parts out and uh, put them in a box or a drawer or somewhere and then we'll spend five years looking for them so <laughs> I really need to get a, another a storeroom built um, my plans were to build a new garage and take the existing garage and turn it into part of the uh, electronic shop but I, I'm not I'm not sure yet on what I'm gonna do for that still got a uh, a lot of stuff in here that I'm working on and I'm trying to get out of taking in repairs um, the ones I have taken in has been pretty much tough ones and I need to get out of that you know if it's just something simple and fine but I don't need to uh, keep taking in these long-term projects that take so long to get through that'll give me more time in here on the bench making videos so that is my goal for 2022 let's get everything I got in here finished up and take on small stuff that would be simple to go ahead and work on get it fixed and get it out uh, these restorations that I've been doing for other people have just really been taking a lot of time up and still working on the FT-77 I've got the radio back together we have power coming out of the radio we still have some issues and I think the bias side of the radio I'm only getting about 30 watts out of it so uh, I'm working on that we'll be getting that done a few other projects going on in here in the shop that uh, we'll be showing we got a few restorations of my own equipment that we'll be getting to here soon um, 2022 is going to be very busy here in the shop we got a lot of projects to work on so we should be having uh, a lot of a lot of good times in here as far as this Aritsu MT8802A um, I like to make videos on doing the restoration on it I will say it's going to be very intense repair it's not just uh, <laughs> you know pull stuff out and replace it it's a lot of screws uh, a lot of RF voodoo magic going on in this thing so you know it's it's going to take time to go through this and uh, get everything correct the way it's supposed to be I got capacitors already to uh, start repairing this thing these are low profile 105 degrees and there's a whole box here from DigiKey and this thing is just full of capacitors know exactly uh, how many is in here but there was a lot there's even these uh, can style they look almost like surface mount caps but they are um, they're through hole so yeah there's a lot of capacitors here to be replaced one of the big things is keeping up with which screw come out of which hole oh, because many screws are the same size different lengths and you don't want to put the long screws back in the uh, holes where the short screws come from because you can cause some damage 
so the good thing is uh you know this does have spectrum analyzer in it goes up to three gigahertz does not have a tracking gen that's one thing i don't see and you know or a sweep generator i'm not sure about all that i've got to dig into the manual they use the manual a little bit more and read about it i know that uh these things are designed for cell service but it does have the analog tester so we can test radios the IFR 1200 Super S are nice the only thing about those there's nothing on the spectrum analyzer that's really that usable as far as checking stuff this will give you everything um, it'll display all your measurements on the screen it does sign ahead you can uh, connect the radio to it generate a signal into it look at the sign ad it does it all right in one self-contained unit so it's going to be a very nice addition I'm probably going to have to uh, rearrange everything over here and get this thing sitting back over in this area uh, get some of this other stuff moved around so I need to redo this bench so that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway guys, this will be the last video for 2021. So that we go out, taking a look at this uh, Aritsu and see just how bad it was to uh, take care of that boot up problem. And so it looks like uh, all you got to do is replace that battery so you don't have to use the presets to uh, get it to reboot. So that's that's good to know um, like I say very little information on this thing but we'll go through this thing step by step and uh, see what we can come up with again I think it'll be a nice piece of equipment here on the bench all right guys that's a wrap on this for now so uh, hope everyone has a great new year um, if you would leave your comments down the below I always like to hear from you don't ask this much but if you like the video give me a thumbs up that really helps on YouTube and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do and also we're doing some videos over on Patreon we'll be getting more up on 2022 if you'd like to join us there links down below and guys we'll see you in the next video bye now